And I think this week just kind of adds to it that we're living in times that are just kind of really crazy right now, right? A lot, a lot of things just, just taking place and kind of one on top of the other. How many uh, people thought, man, I'm glad 2020's over, okay? And it seems like, okay, now what? 2020 has, what, 14 months now or something like that instead of 12? Uh, it just seems like thing after thing keeps uh, taking place. And we can see around us because of a lot of things that have happened that are happening, there is fear, there is anxiety, there is uncertainty. And the thing about it, when it's around us, it's very easy for that to come and start encamping inside of us, right? It's just so easy for that to happen. And so we need to understand that this is not a time for us to live in fear, anxiety, or panic, because we have a hope. And it's not just a hope that is the pie in the sky hope. We have a living hope that is Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? A living hope. A hope we know. Uh, a hope that has communicated to us. A hope that is God. That reigns above all. It's kind of like the Apostle Paul told Timothy. This young man that he was, you might say, mentoring to, to help him to, to be a leader within the, the church and also kind of to, to, to take some of the reins in different places. He told Timothy this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So here's the big idea that I want to share this morning. It's like this. We need to remember certain truths about God, and they will empower us to live our lives and respond in ways that are good for us and also good to show the glory of God to others. So this morning, we're going to look at two major points I want to share today. And they are, remember that, and therefore we. Remember that, and therefore we. So let's start with the first one, remember that, okay? Remember that. And we're going to start with the, the idea, looking back in the Old Testament, to Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, it, it says this, a part of that chapter, for just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways. This is God speaking. So are God's ways higher than your ways, than my ways. And my thoughts, God speaking, is higher than your thoughts. And I believe with all the things that takes place in life and a lot of the big things that we see uh, today, we need some God thoughts, right? We need some God thoughts in times like these. And so this morning, I'm going to, to have us look at a whole bunch of scriptures, okay? We start with Isaiah 55, and the neat thing is we have 55 slides this morning as well, okay? So usually there's about 20. That doesn't mean we're going all day, but it's it just passages of scripture that uh, we're, we're going to look at not in big detail, but just look at God's thoughts. What does God say? Because I think a lot of times we start looking at the fear, the anxiety, the uncertainty of people in a world that is fallen, and we start feeling the same way. And we have to look to God. See, worship isn't something that you just, okay, it's naturally we just worship God. We have to seek God. Even though he seeks us, he makes it known that he is God. We can see that in creation itself, that there is a creator, but we have to seek him. And so all the other thoughts bombard us all the time. And we have to consciously be looking to the thoughts of God. And so let's continue on. Here's some of the reasons why we're using so many scriptures this morning. Continue on in Isaiah 55. As the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that is it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word, this is God speaking, so is God's word that goes out from my mouth. 
It will not return to me empty, God speaking, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I've sent it. Now, I like that. So God says, just like the rain and the snow comes, it has a purpose. And before it comes back to me, okay, it's going to, to do some things. And the same way as God said, when I give you my word, it's not going to return to me void. It's spoken with a purpose. Okay? So God's word is alive. It is active. And it needs to accomplish its purpose today. Not just back many, many years ago when Isaiah spoke. It needs to accomplish things today. So as we look at these scriptures, lean into them. Okay, we need to lean into them and listen. So in times like these, we need to remember that our God is still on his throne. Isaiah 6.1. In the year that King Uzziah died. Now that's a weird one, isn't it? Norm, why would you even mention that? Isaiah is kind of a, a different book. It seems like you're beginning the book when you get to chapter 6, okay? Because it's the calling of Isaiah to be the prophet, so there's all this other before. So this sounds like the book is beginning, okay? In the year that King Uzziah died. So this is when Isaiah is being called as a prophet. And those seven words are pretty easy just to go over, okay? We don't even care who Uzziah is. Let's keep going. What's God going to say after this? But we need to understand that Uzziah has been the king for God's people for 55 years and relatively a good king. And now he's dead. Do you think the people had some anxiety? Okay. So what was the nation feeling? Is there going to be trouble? What uncertainty is there? Who's going to be the next king? Is the next king going to be good? Because they know their history. They didn't always have good kings. He's been king for 55 years. Think of the anxiety that we have in this nation where we have a president maybe eight years or four years and there's a change. Okay? 55 years. And so we need to listen. That as they are feeling the anxiety, the uncertainty, God knows exactly what they need. Okay? God knows. God knows that they need to understand that even though the king is dead, God is still on his throne. The throne has not been vacated. God is still on his throne. And then Isaiah, it goes on. He says, I saw the Lord. High and exalted, seated on a throne. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, which each uh, with six wings. With two wings they covered their face. With two they covered their feet. And with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The, the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voice, the doorpost and the threshold shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. You go, wow. Isaiah is seeing this. One more verse from Isaiah for right now. You go to chapter 40 and verse 21. One more verse about God being on his throne. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? have not understood since the earth was founded. He sets them throne above the circle of the earth. Okay? So the king dies. What's going to happen? Everything's going to fall apart. Haven't you known from the beginning that God sets upon a throne? You want a little footnote here? He's above the circle of the earth. Isn't it weird that people thought the earth was flat? Okay, here's one of the places scripture helps us to see. Okay, it's a circle. Okay. See, at times we must remember. And at times like these, we need to remember that God is still on his throne. Okay? See, our God is still on his throne. Also in times like these, 
we need to remember that our God is in control. Jesus said to them, all authority has given, been given to me in heaven and on earth. How much authority does Jesus have? All. And so as we go back to Isaiah, God has all. He's above the earth. His thoughts are greater than our thoughts. He's on his throne. And don't, don't get crazy just because a king dies. And Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. So what kind of authority does God have all? What kind of authority does Jesus have all? And that's why the Apostle Paul can say in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Doesn't it just make sense that God can work through all things and make things happen because he has all authority? Okay? He can work through every situation there is. And when you look at history, there's some remarkable things that, that has taken place, even in our short history as a nation, that you can say it had to be the hand of God. It had to be the hand of God. Because he has all authority. You know, think about it in Luke chapter 2. Caesar Augustus, he's the big guy. Because Romans, the, the, the power at that time. He decides, I'm going to have a census. And so I'm going to have all the Roman world. You have to go back to your, your hometown. And we're going to have a count. He thought he was in control. This is what I'm going to do. There's going to be a census. Everybody has to do that. But who was in control? God was. Because we see clear back from the prophet Micah that we find out that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. And there's a problem. Joseph and Mary live in Nazareth. Okay? And so God orchestrates through Caesar Augustus that there's going to be a census because then Joseph and Mary has to go to Bethlehem and Jesus is going to be born there, the Savior is, which was foretold. Who was in charge? Was Caesar Augustus? Or the one that has all authority. At times like these, we need to remember that God is in control. Also in times like these, we need to remember that our God can be trusted. He can be trusted. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart rejoices and I praise him with my song. John 14, 1 through 3, as Jesus is speaking, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, also trust in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If there, this were not so, what I have not told you, that I'm going to prepare a place for you, uh, when everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. At times like these, we need to remember God can be trusted. Also in times like these, we need to remember that our God is our help. Psalm 121 if you, you have your Bible, probably on the top it says it's a, a psalm or a song of ascent. Now, what that means is remember when you were traveling in Judea, Jerusalem is the high point, okay? It's on a mountain. So you're always traveling up towards Jerusalem. So this is a psalm of ascent. So this is a song that the people sang when they were going to the temple to worship. It's a song of ascent. And so as they, they gathered together, as they, they traveled, they, they would talk, they would uh, share news, but also they sang songs. And this is one of the songs that they sang as they were going to Jerusalem to worship. And so it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Now, doesn't that make sense when it's Jerusalem's up on a mountain? 
We're looking up, okay? Our whole trek is we are looking up where my help comes from. So is our help from the CDC? Don't answer, okay. Is it from the news media? Is our help from Washington or is it from the Oval Office? No, my help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth, he will not let your foot slip. So see, they're trekking up the mountain, okay? He watches over you. You will not uh, slumber indeed. He will watch over Israel with neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade and your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life and the Lord will watch over your coming and going now and forever. I like that word watch. He's watching. He's watching. Right? He cares. So in times like these, remember that God is our help. Now, understand, we could go point by point and many of them because of the greatness of God. See, we could go things like, in times like this, we need to remember that our God is faithful. Our God keeps his promises. Our God is the Alpha Omega. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. We could go on and on and on. So this is just a partial list, but one more I want to share with you that we need to remember in times like this, remember that our God is great and our God is good. Psalm 145 in verse three, great is the Lord, he is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. He goes on talking about the greatness of God. It says, he breathes out the stars. Isn't that cool? Because he's the creator. Okay, where else did they come from? Okay, he created, he breathes out the stars. One star that's in our galaxy, Canis Majoris, I think that's how you say it, which means big dog, okay? It's the big dog star. It is 1,420 times bigger than our sun, okay? So think about this. The big dog star, God breathes out, but that's just one of the stars of many stars in the Milky Way, which is just one galaxy of many galaxies. Wow. He holds the oceans in his hand. He stretches out the heavens. Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 32, 17, O sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arms. Nothing is too hard for you. Now, doesn't that make sense? If he could create everything, even the big dog star, what in my life could be too big that he couldn't take care of? Psalm 100 and verse 5, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. How long does his love endure? Forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. How long does his faithfulness go? To all generations, okay? So in these troubled and anxious and uncertain times, we need to remember that God is still on his throne. He is in control. He can be trusted. He is our help. He is great and he is good. And the list goes on and on and on. So remember that. But also point number two, therefore. Therefore, because of all these things about God, we will not fear, we will trust. But if we don't remember the greatness of God, if we just look at the frailty of ourselves, we will fear. Okay? So the fear is remembering God. I will trust God so I don't need to fear. Psalm 23, 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod, your staff protect and comfort me. Psalm 27, 
verses 1 and 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And so why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I'm attacked, I will remain comforted. And we need to hold on to that. We will not fear. Why? Because we will trust. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. Strength, Always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earth, the earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. So we will not fear when there's a coronavirus or the stock markets go crazy or all the, even when all the people around us are panicking. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble and the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. For the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the, the earth melts. The, the Lord of heaven's armies is there among us. The, the God of Israel is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end through the, the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. But still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The Lord of Israel is our fortress. See, our God is still on his throne. He is in control. He can be trusted. He is our help. He is great. He is good. Therefore, we will not fear. We will trust. But also, therefore, we will not worry. We will pray. Jesus said, this is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky. They, they don't sow or, or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? The robin says to the sparrow, that's not scripture, okay, okay. The robin says to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush around and worry so. The sparrow says to the robin, friend, I think they must be that they, I, I think they must be that they have no heavenly father that cares for them like you and me. Can any of you add a single cubit to his height by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Learn how the, the wildflowers of the, the field grow. They don't labor or spin or, or thread. Yet, I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you? You have little faith. So don't worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek all these things. And your heavenly father knows that, that you need them. But seek the first but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will have worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And then check out the words of the Apostle Paul. He's in prison in Rome, Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice. In the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, through prayer, petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Uh, and the, the peace of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers... 
whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is uh, commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there's any praise, dwell on these things. So here's your challenge. If we spent more time looking at God's word like passages like this, and less time bringing in the things of this world, do you think it would make a difference? Do you think there would be more peace within our lives or less peace? I think there would be more peace. In these troubled, anxious, uncertain times, we need to remember that our God is still on his throne, is in control, can be trusted, is our help, and he is great and good, we will not fear, we will trust, we will not worry, we will pray, and we will consider it pure joy. James writes, consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So you notice here that there is a purpose behind difficulties. And part of that purpose is it's an opportunity for joy. But it's also an opportunity because we will lack. We will lack wisdom. We will lack, I don't know how to face what's coming. And so we go and ask God. And he will help us to see the way because he will give us the wisdom. As James writes, if any one of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you, and when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. So in these troubled and anxious and uncertain times, we need to remember our God is still on his throne. He's in control, can be trusted. He is our help. He is great. He is good. And therefore, we will be a light and we will live differently. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, so that they may see your good works and give glory to the Father who is in heaven. Understand that the world needs to see people that are living differently in this time of worry, anxiety, uncertainty. So, excuse me, so we can't live stupidly with fear and panic. Because, see, when we live being that light, so often it gives us an opportunity that we can talk to people because they will ask us, why do you act differently when everybody else is acting this way? And so sometimes we can have a great conversation with people to bring God's light within their lives. As Peter said, Honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that you have. Don't you want people to ask? So many people are so uncertain. They need certainty. They need the living hope of Jesus Christ. And by us living differently in these times, people may listen and they may find the peace that surpasses all understanding. The Apostle Paul reacted this way as he's in prison. He says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. So all this thing, he's in prison waiting to be executed. And he says, all this happened so that I can advance the gospel. So in these troubled, anxious, and uncertain times, we need to remember that. Our God is still on his throne. He is in control. He can be trusted. 
He is our help. He is great and good. Therefore, we will show compassion. Matthew 9, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. See, we need to understand about half the people in our nation do not even know the good shepherd. And fewer than half follow him as Lord. And so no wonder people are running around like a, okay, my granddad raised sheep and we had them sometime too, like a stupid sheep, okay? <laughs> because they don't have a shepherd. They need a shepherd. And so we need to have compassion because people do have fears. They do have concerns. They do have needs. And so this is a great opportunity for us to serve others, helping people if it's they're short on food and need someone to go get it. Or if it's going and getting medicine for, for someone in places where we can do that. Or sometimes just friendship. See, in these troubled times that are anxious and certain, uncertain, we need to remember our God is still on his throne. He is in control. He can be trusted. He is our help. He is great and good. And th therefore, we will seize the moment. Remember Esther? In Esther chapter 4, it was told to her, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So God has a plan. God is always in control. But how much better it is when you're a part of the plan, okay? It's so much better to be that way. So this is the time that we can demonstrate hope and love and mercy and grace and compassion, confidence and peace that are found in Jesus Christ alone. Therefore, we will fix our eyes on Jesus, not on the crisis, not on the news media, not on fear and panic, not on tweets and posts, not on the wind and wave, but on Jesus. But Jesus he immediately saw them. Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? In these troubled, anxious, and uncertain times, we need to remember that our God is still on his throne is in control, can be trusted, is our help, is great and good. And as the worship team comes up, one last thought I'd like to share. So we will not fear. We will trust. We will not worry. We will pray. We will consider it pure joy. Therefore, we will be a light and we will live differently. Therefore, we will show compassion. Therefore, we will seize this moment and we will fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's stand together as we sing.